what did Halo Infinite look like before 343 Industries updated the game? What's up everybody? For the last two weeks in secret, I've been finding old builds of Halo Infinite and documenting exactly how Halo Infinite launched. We're talking monetization, customization, amount of playable content, glitches, you name it. I thought it was really important to make a video that actually documents exactly how the game was at launch and we can make comparisons to today, but more importantly than that, to ensure 343 doesn't release a game like this or in a similar state ever again. Halo Infinite when it first came out is a completely different game than what we play today. There was no forge, there was no progression, the challenge system was an absolute mess, and there was multiple times where basic colors were being sold for $20 to $30. I really hope this video sets a benchmark of just how the game was when it first came out. I mean, there was only four playable playlists. One was against bots, quick play, BTB, and ranked arena. That was it. And then you had the rotational Fiesta event, and the rotational attrition event. That was Tenrai and Cyber Showdown 1. It's really funny because I was actually thinking, oh, I can talk about all the new vehicles and weapons that have come out through Halo Infinite's life cycle. And then I was like, hang on a minute. The only new weapon we've had is the Bandit, and the only vehicle we've had is the Forklift. I've read all the comments from you guys, and the number one request that the community has for Halo Infinite is some brand new weapons and vehicles. And it's so important, I'm mentioning it right now. If you guys want new weapons on this game, leave me a comment down below. Name some weapons you want to see. Hopefully 343 sees this and they're like, oh wow, maybe we should finish off those weapons and vehicles that we have 90% complete in the files. That would be a good first start. But Halo Infinite before the updates came out, the only difference in weapons was there was no Bandit Evo or the standard Bandit. There was no forklift. Now putting that aside, but there's two specific items in the sandbox that were vastly different on launch than they are today on Halo Infinite. The original Ravager, sucked and the original dynamo grenades were incredible. I don't know if you guys remember the original dynamo grenades, but if you threw them towards an enemy, it would shred everyone, and it would chain between enemies, almost insta-killing large groups of people. I know the competitive players didn't like this, and that was the main reason it got changed, but I loved playing big team battle. I throw two dynamo grenades in the hill, and it kills four to five people. That was satisfying. Now moving on from that, we have customization. And in terms of customization, there was no cross-core customization. Now I know everyone is really happy that we have cross-core customization, but there's been a really big downside to it. 343 has said that since numerous pieces all have cross-core customization now, they have more value, and it's actually made the monetization worse. I think the monetization and the shop somehow was better in season one than we have now. It really seems like they've tripled down on the monetization aspect and things are way more expensive now. If you just focus on just customization, you get basic colors now. Before Halo Infinite got updated, they were selling basic colors. So in that regard, it's much better now. Something that is also much better now is the playlists. What can you actually play on Halo Infinite? When this game came out, there wasn't even a Team Slayer playlist as the UI, the user interface did not support it. Absolute craziness. Whatever Halo game comes out next, 343, you need to make sure it has adequate content day one. And more than that, it has adequate content after that. Now moving on to ranks and progression, as I said, there was absolutely no progression system. The only ranking system was the bronze to onyx ranking system and the challenge system when the game first launched was an absolute abomination. So many people complained they couldn't complete their challenges because they couldn't get the game mode or the specific weapon they needed to complete a challenge. On top of that, there were some very specific challenges that you couldn't go out of your way to get, you just had to play and hope you got the game mode. Or more than that, the situation to actually complete the challenge. People would play for hours and hours and hours and not have any progression at all. It's really good that 343 actually took steps to fix this because now even if you don't complete your challenges, just by playing the game, progress your battle pass and people don't have to spend all this money on challenge swaps just to finish the battle pass. Now this brings me to the season one battle pass and honestly it was probably one of the best battle passes we got. The only big difference is that you didn't get credits back from the season one battle pass. Unfortunately 343 has also removed this with the 
move to operations. I'm also wondering where did the other Halo Reach armor go? Because as we all know, some of the content got cut from the Battle Pass and then 343 released it with the winter update last year. And then people noticed there was extra stuff that hasn't come out and never got released. Next up is campaign. And this is a big one because there's been no real changes to the campaign aside from 343 decoupling it to the multiplayer so they can iterate on the multiplayer and update that much faster without having to test any of the changes that get made in the campaign. The only real patches we've seen to the campaign have been actually patching out fun bugs, speedrunning tech, and stuff of that nature. The big thing here is campaign co-op. Halo Infinite launched with no campaign co-op. There still is no split screen. It was 90% completed, but we had to wait six to 12 months for campaign network co-op. And by then, all interest in the campaign was dead. This was a massive black eye for the game as a whole. And it probably wasn't there at launch because they were pushing just to get the multiplayer side up to speed because of all the massive issues they had with the development of the game. But whatever game comes out next, campaign co-op is a must have. And this includes local split screen. If you can't do four, two players at the very minimum. Trying to do four player network campaign introduces a whole bunch of issues, which I have no doubt 343 ran into and was the major deciding factor into them cancelling the feature. Even Bungie in 2007 had huge issues implementing the four player campaign for Halo 3 and with Halo Infinite being so big, especially with the open world, I could only imagine the networking problems they had. In any case, whatever comes next needs to have co-op. Aside from that, I haven't even mentioned campaign DLC. There's been no campaign DLC, unfortunately. We know that's not going to happen now, but I would really love to see a continuation of the story at the very least sometime in the future, because I really think Halo stories are one of the strongest points of the Halo franchise. People want new Halo campaigns, myself included. Finally, we have custom games and I'm going to include Forge in this too as Halo Infinite before the updates didn't even have Forge and 90 to 95% of the content we play today and is new to the game is Forge made community driven and Halo Infinite before these updates came out we had none of it no Forge, very little custom game options. It really cannot be stated enough just how bare bones this game was at launch. I have the old build of the game and when you load it up and actually compare it to Halo Infinite now, you're like, wow. It's such a shame the game took such a long time to get where it is today because I really believe the gameplay, and many of you guys have said the same thing, is really fantastic on Infinite. It's the closest you can get to the classic games while still being a modern evolved version of it. There's so many things to love about Halo Infinite, but nowadays, if you don't nail that launch and then maybe that one to two month window upon release, and I mean, we've seen that again just this last week with the Star Wars Battlefront collection, that launch so broken, the game is dead on arrival. So if your games now don't launch in a perfect state and don't have follow-up content regularly, people aren't going to stick around. Now while I'm talking about gameplay, the only real sandbox additions we've had is the new equipment, the repair field, the quantum translocator, the shroud screen. All of these items feel like they're being cherry-picked from the Tatanka Battle Royale mode that is now cancelled. Again, Halo Infinite before the updates. I love the grapple hook. I love the repulsor. It's one of the strongest parts of the game, so I'm not going to be too critical on it. So guys, that is it. That is Halo Infinite before 343 updated the game. Every single aspect how the game was. And I have to ask you guys, do you think it's gotten better? Is it a night and day difference between what we had then and what we have now? I hope this video serves as documentation of just how Halo Infinite was. What I hope for the future is for the next Halo game to launch feature complete. It needs to have Forge. It needs to have playlists. It needs to have good customization. Everything Halo fans expect needs to be there at launch. I personally don't care how long it takes. You do not launch the next game until it is truly ready. And even when you have it ready, you need to be able to release new updates and not do six month seasons again. There needs to be lots of content already being worked on. As the game launches, the finish line isn't the release of the game. The finish line is three years after the game comes out. 95% of Halo Infinite's updates have been just getting the game up to parity with past Halo titles. Imagine if Halo Infinite launched with everything you would expect from a Halo game. Those extra two years we've just gone through would have been all new and exciting content. New game modes we had never seen before, but instead, 343 had to play catch up, and that's what I don't want to happen again. If you agree, leave the video a like, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you all for watching, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.